Fall City is 26 miles from downtown Seattle, just downriver from the falls where Snoqualmie and the raging rivers meet. The reason we're where we are is the river. But this site is an especially favorable landing on the Snoqualmie River. And in the early Washington Territory, rivers were the roads. And sometimes the rivers interrupted the roads. Still, the community grew. One way to look at Fall City eras is with how did you get across the river? Early on, it was dugout cedar canoes. Then came more cargo capacity. It was a ferry, a water-powered, river current-powered ferry built by the Rutherford brothers. And it operated from about 1885 to 1889. So the first bridge was a wooden bridge across the river. If you can imagine a 350-foot span wooden bridge. The first concrete bridge was built in 1917, and it stood for decades. Quite a lovely arched bridge. It was replaced in 1980, not because the bridge was not no longer sound, but it wasn't wide enough to be adequate for the increased traffic. So in 1980, the current bridge was built, which as you'll see from the picture is much higher above the river. Fall City was also a junction for motorists crossing Snoqualmie Pass. You know, everybody who came from the eastern side of the state came through here and came to Fall City. And from there you could go north, from there you could go west, from there you could go south. So, you know, it was a major crossroads early on. And when the first two cross-country highways were built, you know, one was called the Sunset Highway and the other the Yellowstone Trail, both of those came over the pass and into Fall City. It was a big boom for the hospitality industry with travelers looking for a bite to eat, especially close to the river. In 1925, a one-story building was built there and it was the Riverside Tavern. The next owner in 1933 added a second story and now it was the Riverside Tavern and Lodge. And that building has continued to be a centerpiece business up until the present time. Today, it's the Fall City Roadhouse and Inn. The new owners have preserved the facade and lovingly updated the interiors. This is an iconic building. They look for it, they do their driving directions off of it, they meet here. So keeping the look of it, we weren't interested in changing it and sort of reinventing it. It already has a wonderful history that we wanted to keep. The inn has seven rooms for bikers, hikers, and anyone else who wants to take in the sights of the beautiful Snoqualmie River Valley. We grow vegetables, we grow Christmas trees, we grow pumpkins. Pumpkins is a big business for us. Yep, families come from all around to buy pumpkins and produce from the farmers in the valley. Well, I think just walking on the farm is just something to see. Uh, it's just a beautiful spot right along the Snoqualmie River. Or you can discover the historic Baxter Barn, originally built by Fall City's first minister and blacksmith. Today, it's a model of conservation and environmental stewardship. We've had a um, grant for the upland wildlife habitat, so that's encouraging wildlife to come back on the property. So that's uh, native plants that produce food or shelter for the animals. And there's plenty of animals to see here. Yeah, we have um, three horses, 11 miniature donkeys right now, which three of them are babies that were born the last couple months. Uh, we have a flock of chickens um, that run through the fields and then we have quail and pheasant also. Baxter Barn is a favorite spot for school field trips. Children's Garden is a family-run business devoted to families. 
you can also enjoy flowers from the local growers that supply the Pike Place Market in Seattle. You know, the stuff is grown locally, and uh, that's, you know, that's how they want it. They know where it's coming from, and they also like to come out here and pick it themselves, too. And, uh, that's what you know, we like to see the valley for, growing things. And if you like unusual accommodations, how about a treehouse? Yup. At the Treehouse Point Inn, you don't have to stay grounded. Your hotel room is high above. Interiors are complete with handmade furniture and the sound of the river. Fall City may have something for everyone, but it's not actually a city. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. It's a rural township. This is a meeting of the Fall City Community Association. It's very community oriented, everything is volunteer, and we just love it here. And we want to just keep it rural, but we have to be able to live here too. Volunteers are the heart and soul of the community and are responsible for most civic projects, like the downtown art walk. The annual Fall City Days Festival. Even the iconic totem pole was carved by a Fall City resident, Hugh Hines, years ago. The Garden Park was also built by volunteers. The Fall City Community Association restored that two years ago. It had a lot of rot. We had to do a lot of treatment for it and get it repainted. Rural towns are an important thing, and they're kind of an endangered species. But Fall City is a little town that has taken care of itself. Residents of Fall City have kind of an unofficial slogan for their community and their way of life. If you're lucky enough to live in Fall City, you're lucky enough. To find out more about Fall City, visit www.fallcity.org.